this is going to be a very simple video because I saw this at the local supermarket. It's a mechanical time switch and I thought, I wonder if they've changed much over time. So let's take a look at it. So the unit is designed to plug directly into a socket. It doesn't come out the box for a start. That's quite reassuring. It's designed to plug directly into socket. You plug your appliance into it. No great surprise. It's got these little pins that push down. And the more it gets pushed down, that basically it's the point it turns on. And if you lift them back up again, it turns off at that point in time. Very straightforward. You've also got the timer mode, or you can click this up, and it goes into the override mode, and it brings it in all the time. And it really just, I can see the little lever thing in there just clicking out the way when I do that. Interestingly, it says... Uh, this 24-hour timer has an accuracy of plus or minus six minutes a day. That is huge. That's ridiculous. It suggests a bit sort of sloppy timing because uh, usually these things are based on synchronous motors. Let's uh, open it up. So the screws in these are tri-blade. They're tamper-proof screws. Hold on. Uh, where's my tri-blade screwdriver? There it is. Handy tamper-proof screwdrivers. Or tamper-proof screw screwdrivers. I got a set from Timu. It's a fairly generic set. Very useful. Especially when people try to keep us out of their products. And we can't have that, can we? I'm expecting a very small synchronous motor. Universal one used for all the voltages around the world, and it will have a resistor or capacitor in series with it. Am I going to be right? Oh, this isn't opening. This isn't opening. Let's get the spudger into it and just give it a little bit of a helping hand. Ooh, there we go, there we go. There is a little lever thing. It's a standard micro switch. There is indeed the... Let's zoom down this. There's the little synchronous motor. It looks like a clock motor, you know, the quartz clock motor, but it is just running at mains frequency. And uh, it's got a resistor in series that green, brown, orange. Uh, 51K. Let's double check that. Meter. Then we'll plug it in and see it spinning. So I'll go on to this connection here. I'll turn the meter actually on. Yep, 51k roughly. What about the coil itself? About 4k. Let's uh, go to a little, little bit of higher accuracy than that. Yeah, it's 4,000, 4.2 thousand ohms that coil. It's still quite a high resistance, isn't it? For uh, a continuous copper winding, it must be super fine wire. Uh, the micro switch. Looks fairly standard. This thing is rated to switch 13 amps, theoretically, uh, which means it can drive a 3 kilowatt load, but I'm not sure I'd recommend that. The inductive loads for um, like things like transformers or ballasts uh, and things like that, they only rate it for 2 amps, but I've found in the past that the contacts tend to weld if you switch things like discharge lights with them. But I tell you what, well, there's also a 100k resistor in series with the LED. They're using a very crude circuit here in the sense that the LED is probably only lighting in one direction, but then the um, it's just basically shunted out in the other direction because the LEDs have a sort of avalanche effect when you do that. You can only do it with the traditional red LEDs, uh, not the modern gallium nitride ones. Right, tell you what, I'm going to plug this in. And we'll actually measure its power. Uh, where is the tester down here? I'm not seeing it. I've shuffled stuff. There it is. It's the anti, which is quite accurate-ish, so let's plug it in here. That's going to obscure the display, that's all right. So I'll plug it in. It is whizzing around at a fair speed in there. And the switch... The LED is so dim for that dissipation from that. So it's showing a current of 4 milliamps, a power of 1 watt, the power factor of 0.998, because it is basically acting almost as purely resistive load. Um, see what they... If I slide this... No, can't slide that, because the little cantilever things 
out of the way. But if I push this switch in, using an inappropriate screwdriver to do it, uh, the power goes up at another half watt for the LED and resistor, most of which is just wasted across the resistor. Right, tell you what, let's take a look at the mechanism here. So when uh, this is in place, this is unplugged now, this little mechanism here is the one that is pushed by those pins and clicks the switch in. And when you push this override switch up, all it does is it pushes that in directly. Not to be said for the old micro switches, They're, they've been around for so long, they're just like a national standard around the world. Let's get this out and see if there's anything worth looking at. So I can see a thing there, looking for a screwdriver. Is this going to come out? Yes, it is going to come out. So this toothed thing, this toothed thing, uh, the output drive from the motor here is going on to the outside of this to rotate this. Then it's just these little captive things that click up and down. Do they even come off or are they just press fitted on? Let's uh, prize them and see if they pop off. Oh, they don't actually come off that easy. What if I separate this from here? Are they now going to pop off? No, they actually, they're fairly captive. It's almost like a zipper. Mm. Yeah, they come off. They're just basically slotted onto this. It probably is done by a machine at the factory. And uh, the little indents and everything are built into that. That's interesting. So I can put these back in. Lovely. Uh, but that's it. Really not an awful lot. The little synchronous motor, which I would have thought that would be accurate, running off the 50 hertz or 60 hertz in the case of America with suitable gearing ratio. But that's quite a nice little motor in there with its uh, gear chain. Oh, and, uh, and it's got a little mechanism that if it runs in the wrong direction, uh, it just kicks the thing and actually locks it and that forces it to run in the correct direction. That's also quite interesting. But there we have it. Nothing particularly complicated in this timer. It really is a very simple mechanical thing. It's uh, the synchronous motor, the uh, gearbox uh, rotating this, and then that pushes against the cam that pushes the switch in, and that is more or less it.